on World News Tonight. Mosquito Menace. World Health Organization urges swift action as dengue cases surge in Bangladesh. Impeachment Gamble. US House's Kevin McCarthy opens long shot impeachment probe of Joe Biden. Apple unveils. Apple debuts iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max designs to deliver Apple's lightest Pro models ever. Fashion Manifesto. New London exhibition sets center stage to reveal famous luxury brand Chanel's creations. This is Adha Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening, you are joining us on World News. We start off in Bangladesh as the country is battling its worst dengue outbreak on record with more than 600 people killed and 135,000 cases reported since April. The World Health Organization blamed the climate crisis and El Nino weather pattern for diving the surge. The country's healthcare system is straining under the influx of six people and local media have reported hospitals are facing a shortage of beds and staff to care for those patients. While dengue fever is endemic in Bangladesh, with infections typically peaking during the monsoon season, this year the uptick in cases started much earlier, towards the end of April. Dengue causes flu-like symptoms, including piercing headaches, muscle and joint pains, fever and full body rashes. It is transmitted to humans through the bite of an infected mosquito and there is no specific treatment for the disease. According to WHO, dengue is endemic in more than 100 countries and every year 100 million to 400 million people become infected. All 64 districts across Bangladesh have been affected by the outbreak, but the capital Dhaka, home to more than 20 million people, has been the worst hit city. Dhaka is one of the most densely populated cities in the world and rapid unplanned urbanization has exacerbated outbreaks. To cope with the outslot of infections, Bangladesh has repurposed six COVID-19 hospitals to care for dengue patients and requested help from WHO to help detect and manage cases earlier. Over in Libya, the devastating storm Daniel has washed away entire neighborhoods in the eastern city of Derna. More than 5,000 people are feared dead while the death toll continues to rise with thousands still going missing and families displaced. The eastern Libyan city of Derna, located 300 kilometers east of Benghazi, was hit with heavy rains over the weekend from the Mediterranean storm Daniel. Libya's National Meteorological Center said there was a record 414.1 millimeters of rain from Sunday to Monday. At least 2,300 people have been reported dead, while over 10,000 are reported missing. Humanitarian uh, situation in Derna is, uh, is very much compromised. There are more than 2,000 death uh, cases, 7,000 stranded families to need uh, to be uh, still assisted, uh, more than 40,000 internally displaced persons. Heavy rains caused rivers to swell, two dams and four bridges to collapse, submerging much of the city. The death toll continues to soar as many bodies remain trapped under rubble or washed out into the Mediterranean Sea. Military personnel have been deployed and foreign aid has also arrived, but rescue workers are struggling to enter the city for further rescue efforts. Libya is often hit with flooding during the rainy season, but rarely with destruction of this level. As well as the intensity of Storm Daniel, the vulnerability of the poorly maintained infrastructure is seen to have worsened the casualties. The country's division between two rival governments has left many areas of the country's maintenance neglected. In a turn of events now, senior Republican Kevin McCarthy has announced a formal impeachment inquiry against President Joe Biden. McCarthy claims that they have unearthed a culture of corruption surrounding the president. The inquiry will focus on accusations of improper business dealings on the part of the president's son, Hunter Biden, and on whether the president benefited from his son's business dealings. Tonight, under pressure from House Republicans, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy back, opening everyone. an impeachment inquiry into President Biden, investigating whether he benefited from the business dealings of his son, Hunter. House Republicans have uncovered serious and credible allegations into President Biden's conduct. Taken together, these allegations paint a picture 
of a culture of corruption. Less than two weeks ago, McCarthy said he would not launch an inquiry unless the full House voted for one, saying it should not happen through a declaration by one person. But after far-right Republicans threatened to boot him as Speaker and former President Donald Trump turned the screws, McCarthy changed his tune, launching an impeachment probe while conceding he has no evidence President Biden committed high crimes and misdemeanors. House Republicans have already spent nine months investigating whether as vice president, Joe Biden made decisions to help his son and enrich himself, but they've come up empty. Over in the Senate, Republican leader Mitch McConnell keeping the House inquiry at arm's length. I don't think Leader McCarthy, Speaker McCarthy, needs any advice from the Senate on how to run the House. But even some Republicans are saying the evidence against the president is just not there. And from Democrats tonight, outrage. This is an illegitimate impeachment inquiry, period, full stop. It's a waste of time and taxpayer dollars. And the White House tonight attacking McCarthy's move as extreme politics at its worst, adding the president hasn't done anything wrong. Britain's labour market showed more signs of cooling in the three months through July, even as data showering another month of strong pay growth left the banks of England on track for a further interest rate hike in the coming month. There were mixed figures on the UK economy released Tuesday. Official data showed average weekly earnings growth in the three months to July rose to 8.5% in yearly terms. That was up from 8.4% a month before and represented a new high in records dating back over 20 years. Most investors think this will lead the Bank of England to raise interest rates again later this month. They project rates will go up slightly to 5.5% as it tries to rein in the highest rates of inflation among major advanced economies. But other labour market gauges suggested caution was needed about the economic outlook. The unemployment rate rose, while the number of people in work fell sharply and vacancies dipped below 1 million for the first time in two years. Last week, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey said the central bank is much nearer to ending its run of rate increases. But he said that borrowing costs might still rise further because of persistent inflation pressures. Officials said the unemployment rate rose to 4.3% in the three months to July from 4.2% a month earlier. Employment dropped by a greater than expected 207,000 in the three months to July. Wages continued to rise quickly and above the rate of inflation. Pay packets excluding bonuses were 7.8% larger than a year earlier, the joint fastest rate since records began in 2001. Adjusting for consumer price inflation, total average weekly earnings grew 0.6%, the first positive number since March 2022. While good news for workers, the level of pay in real terms remains no better than it was more than 15 years ago. Moving on to the segment on Road to the White House now. The two governors locked horns again. California Governor Gavin Newsom taunted Florida Governor Ron DeSantis over the Republican governor's fading presidential prospects. Newsom has long reveled in lambasting DeSantis, using his Republican nemesis as a foil to attack conservative policies and promote California progressivism. Earlier this year, he responded to DeSantis' swing through California by predicting his presidential run would falter. Newsom's prediction of DeSantis getting smoked by Trump may prove prophetic. DeSantis has stumbled far behind Trump in polls of California Republicans, clearing a path to the state's deep reservoir of GOP presidential delegates as Trump continues to lead the field. Newsom said DeSantis' bid has foundered because of his focus on culture war issues like corporate diversity efforts and educational curricula, rather than pressing in-state issues like the complete disaster of homeowners' insurance issues. DeSantis has punched back at Newsom using a fundraising swing through California to shoot a campaign spot in San Francisco that accused Democrats of destroying the once great city. He has consistently touted Florida's relative lax COVID-19 response as preferable to Newsom's more stringent approach.
Welcome back. Apple today wraps off newer variants of some of its best-selling devices, hoping that they make it to the top of the wish list of customers. The announcement of the iPhone 15 line and upgraded smartwatches at the company's annual event comes against the backdrop of flagging discretionary spending. These are the best and most capable iPhones we've ever made. Apple CEO Tim Cook and executives at the company unveiled its latest devices in a recorded presentation Tuesday. The new lineup includes the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro, which has a titanium case and a faster chip. The 15 starts at $799, while the 15 Pro starts at $999. Apple chose not to raise prices during a tough period globally for smartphone sales. Both the Pro and other iPhone 15 models will have a brighter display and a 48-megapixel camera, as well as 100% recycled cobalt in their batteries. The new product announcements come amid lingering economic uncertainty, especially in China, Apple's third-largest market. It faces challenges there from expanded restrictions on using its iPhones in government offices and the first new flagship phone in several years from Huawei Technologies. The announcements largely met expectations, and Apple's shares were down nearly 2% after the first hour of the event. Apple also showed off a new Series 9 watch with a feature called Double Tap, where users tap their thumb and finger together twice without touching the watch in order to perform tasks like answering a phone call. Here's Apple Chief Operating Officer Jeff Williams. It uses a machine learning algorithm to detect the unique signature of tiny movements and changes in blood flow when your hand and fingers perform a double tap. Cook also said Apple is on track to ship its Vision Pro mixed reality headset early next year. And Washington says it will not hesitate to take action if Pyongyang does provide weapons to Moscow. U.S. defense and commerce officials are also coming to Seoul to discuss the arms deal as well as export controls. Washington says it will not hesitate to take action if Pyongyang does forge ahead with providing weapons to Moscow as speculated, following the upcoming summit between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian President Vladimir Putin. According to U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller on Tuesday, any arms transfer from North Korea to Russia would violate multiple U.N. Security Council resolutions. And we, of course, have aggressively enforced our sanctions against uh, entities that fund Russia's war effort, and we will continue to enforce those sanctions and will not hesitate to impose new sanctions if appropriate. When asked if Russia can unilaterally lift UNSC resolutions against North Korea following comments from the Kremlin that Russia may be willing to discuss the lifting of sanctions currently imposed on North Korea with Pyongyang if necessary, Miller simply said no, adding that Russia cannot take unilateral actions related to the United Nations Security Council. Meanwhile, U.S. defense and commerce officials are set to visit Seoul to discuss the possible arms deal between North Korea and Russia with South Korean government officials. According to the Pentagon, Acting Undersecretary for Defense for Policy Sasha Baker will visit South Korea later this week to take part in the fourth meeting of the Extended Deterrence Strategy and Consultation Group, where she will also meet government and military leaders to discuss the current security environment. U.S. Deputy Secretary of Commerce Don Graves will also visit Seoul next week to discuss ways to strengthen export controls currently in place against Russia. The U.S. is actively pushing for ways to respond to a North Korea-Russia arms deal, as U.S. Deputy Special Envoy for North Korea, Jung Pak, said Monday that the Kim-Putin meeting might be the final step before the countries strike an arms deal. The U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention Director signed off on broad use of updated COVID-19 vaccines approved by the government. This is covering Asia six months and up, as the country prepares to start a vaccination campaign within days. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has urged a broad use of updated COVID-19 shots as the country prepares to start a vaccination campaign within days. The decision covers everybody ages six months and up. CDC Director Mandy Cohen signed off the decision on Tuesday after top advisors in the agency met and voted 13 to 1, recommending shots by Pfizer, BioNTech SE and Moderna. 
The shots target the new XBB15 variant, which is the dominant COVID strain in the U.S. The broad use of COVID vaccines in the U.S. differs from what European countries have been doing, which is prioritizing the elderly and selected groups. The CDC said simply recommending the vaccine for everybody outweighed complications created by tailoring recommendations more precisely. (coughs) COVID infections and hospitalizations have been rising in the U.S., Europe and Asia, but remain well below previous peaks. Deaths are relatively low in the U.S., around 2,000 were reported last month, though the country has experienced 1.1 million COVID deaths since the outset of the pandemic. In other related news, according to a UN migration agency, the U.S.-Mexico border is the world's deadliest land migration route, with hundreds of people losing their lives attempting to make perilous desert crossings. A United Nations agency has declared that the border between the United States and Mexico is the world's deadliest land route for migrants, documenting at least 686 people dead or missing on the frontier last year alone. But it says the true number could be much higher. Paul Dillon is a spokesperson for the UN's International Organization for Migration in Geneva. These figures represent the lowest estimates available as many more deaths are likely to have gone unreported due to a lack of data from official sources. The alarming figures are a stark reminder of the need for decisive action to create regular legal migration pathways. U.S. border officials say migrants have died from heat stroke in the desert's summer heat and hypothermia in winter. Many others go missing. The numbers along the border account for almost half of the more than 1,400 migrant deaths or disappearances documented in the entirety of the Americas last year. That figure includes water routes, not just overland. The world's worst migration region overall is the Mediterranean, according to the UN, with over 2,400 dead or missing in the same period. Welcome back. For more news, let's take care of the world in a minute. According to Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno, Japan had lodged a strong protest against North Korea following Pyongyang's latest missile launch. Matsuno says that both missiles fell in the sea outside Japan's exclusive economic zone and that Tokyo would respond in close cooperation with the international community. The Israel Supreme Court began a hearing on petitions to strike down a major element of the hard right government's controversial judicial overhaul which has triggered mass protests and divided the nation. Morocco's King Mohammed VI visited a hospital in Marrakech and spoke with the injured survivors of the country's deadliest earthquake in six decades. Many people were feared dead and several injured in a fire at a nine-story apartment block in Vietnam's capital of Hanoi. Authorities have not yet confirmed the number of deaths. The remains of alleged non-human beings were presented at Mexico's first public congressional hearing on unidentified anomalous phenomena. The two stuck bodies recovered in 2017 in Peru were 700 and 1,800 years old, with only three fingers on each hand and elongated heads. That is all we have for you on World News tonight. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight in England as a London exhibition looks at the work of one of fashion's most famous names, French designer Gabrielle Coco Chanel. Thank you for watching. Good night. <laughs>